Now that we've learned some things about fear, what are some practical ways to work around it? That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. Thank you so much for being a subscriber, for being a true believer, for being a follower. Great to have you here. Now, when fear is obvious and it's impeding progress, what does the Agile leader do? Well, first, let's remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There's so many resources about what you need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who you need to become in order to lead teams. Let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a unique and powerful force in this industry. And if this helps you, tell your friends. And don't forget to check out my daily Agile Inspirations for Leaders by subscribing to my email list. You'll get a preview of next week's posts and a free video to help you align your week with strength and focus delivered straight to your inbox. You can also submit your coaching or leadership questions, and I'll answer the best ones on a future episode, all at badassagile.com. So go ahead and sign up or post your questions today. I was recently on a project where the client knew they wanted Agile, but they were taking all the wrong approaches to implementing it. It was a classic story. We've all seen it. They were doing daily status meetings, and they had a scrum master who plans everyone's work and reports on budget burn to date, but there's no real Agile practices there. Everything was managed via spreadsheet. They weren't really digging deep and making real meaningful change, either because they didn't know what was required, or they were resisting doing it. And to make matters worse, the big enterprise mindset is so often enabled by a big consultancy, or a big agile coaching mindset, meaning that they had been sold on the idea that real change was going to take a long time, and it had to be planned thoroughly, and it was going to cost big, but only we, that is the external consultant or the external agile agents, had the formula. So maybe they'd been led astray for many years by service firms who more, you know, had their hands out but were unable to serve in the one way they really needed to come through for their clients, and that is leaning into the fears that are so difficult to overcome. I believe that's the most important job of an agile consultant or coach. So if that's the most important job, how do we get after it? How do we help a team that looks and sounds like this? Well, remember, whether it's the fear of failure, the fear of success, the fear of hard work, the fear of criticism, or fear of change that paralyzes a team and creates that act of resistance. What we need to do is pull people towards new mindsets, not push them. Effectively, everything has to be their idea in order to get them properly invested so that they'll execute and stay the course. And then, of course, there are certain things you can do to reduce fear and break down walls. But if you do the wrong things now, you're going to make it worse. So let's review some of what we've learned in the past few episodes on fear and recall the following. Number one, influence is largely based on emotions, the emotions of the other, not logic, and not the things that you as the agile consultant or coach want. Number two, whatever you make with the team, co-create it so that people are invested. There's a tendency as a consultant to push to state the agenda, to basically answer the question for them. But that doesn't do them any good when it comes to overcoming fear. They have to own it and they have to learn it so that eventually when you leave, they can repeat it and grow it. Number three, logic doesn't change anyone's mind ever, ever. Emotion does. Logic only justifies action, but it never causes it. Number four, figure out what people value and you can find a way to connect them to what the organization or its clients value. And number five, changing fear can feel overwhelming for both you and the team. 
So don't forget the first principles of breaking big things into smaller things. So let me help you assemble all of that learning into a strategy for leading people through fear. What can we do for a new team so that people start thinking and doing in agile ways without scaring them off? Well, what we learned in a previous episode is that the simplest way to remember how to conquer fear is a two-step process of drowning the fear and lessening the fear. Now remember, drowning the fear means creating a reason for doing things differently that's so compelling that you can't feel the fear as much anymore. It's a bit like the law of diminishing returns. A pickpocket will slap you on the shoulder as they pull your wallet out of your back pocket because you'll only feel the more intense one. So if we can intensify the reason for doing differently, that compelling emotional reason for making change, then the pain of the fear is lessened. Now, in this case, you drown the fear by getting people to work together in a collaborative way, which will cause people to start working in agile ways without even knowing that they're doing it. And a really great place to start is their pain points where the motivation to solve the problem is intrinsically, by definition, higher than the fear of shifting paradigms and working differently. So, when you're starting an agile journey with the team, sometimes the best way to start is to have them list their pain points and prioritize them. What is it that's not working today for you? And specifically, how do you know? How does that manifest? What does that turn into? Is it disappointed customers, lower ratings, poor interactions? bad quality software, missed deadlines, how are these things showing up for the team? Now, you don't have to turn your focus entirely on team delivery performance. You can talk about enterprise performance as well. What is it that we as an organization don't do that we need to improve on? Do we ship to customers late? Do we find that we erode margins because we spend so much time spinning on process? And so on and so on and so on. Every company has this list of pain points. This is a fantastic place to start. Because once you prioritize that list, you have at the top something that is really, really dying to be broken through. You have some kind of performance issue, something that you need to be doing better for your team, for your clients, for your customers. Once you've identified it, now you have to rally everyone around it. Ask people their why. Why is it important to solve this problem? If we could fix this issue, what could we do that we're unable to do today? What could we achieve? What could we reach? Who could we help? Now you're getting into the domain of having a compelling emotional reason for working differently that energizes the team and they helped you co-create it. Now think of the opposite. If you were to just come in there and say, hello everybody, I represent Agile. Here's your manual. Here's your two-day course. Now let's start doing this because the company wants you to. Which one would you be more likely to subscribe to and to get behind. Now, once you've started to drown the fear, it's time to lessen the fear. And lessen the fear means decrease the magnitude of the fear responses by repeated and small, non-threatening, incremental exposure to the thing that you fear. See, a lot of people think that you have to start an enterprise-wide plan for introducing Agile. You don't. Agile is simply a better way of working and you can start doing that now. You can formalize, standardize, and grow things directionally towards a well-defined notion of maturity later. Agile teaches us to start now, to leap, and to do important, effective, impactful things today so that they're done and delivering value to the customer tomorrow. Why should change be any different? So what's that mean in terms of rolling out Agile to a new team? Will you lessen the fear by not introducing all of the Agile practices at once? Start with whatever will deliver the most value in the shortest period of time. So it could be breaking epics into stories and then into smaller tasks to reduce the overwhelm. Or it could be a retrospective at the end of the week that allows us to inspect our performance and tune it. So nothing else changes. You just introduce this one ceremony, this one practice and philosophy. Or maybe it's the notion of iterative progress. Just making a commitment, for example, to where we'd like to be at the end of the next week or the next two weeks, and then lining up the tasks that we think are achievable in that time frame, 
limiting work in progress, and just seeing how far we get so we can measure and predict better in the future. And then, at the beginning of the next iteration, we do it again. Or maybe it could be a Kanban board that helps visualize work to simplify reporting and communication and to highlight obstacles more effectively. It could be as simple as bringing the team into a room together to work face-to-face, even if it's only for an hour or two per day. Just do one of these, and you'd be on the path to making the team slightly more agile. Now, I often say, if you don't take on all of the practices, you can't expect all of the benefits, and that's true. But remember, at the beginning, you're not looking to reclaim your investment in agile all in one shot. You're simply looking to hold your team's hand past the hurdle of the initial fear and resistance. And if the best way to reduce fear is to drown it and then lessen it gradually, choosing one or two agile practices to bring into the team one at a time is really going to help you do that. Now, which one should you choose? Well, choose a technique that suits the pain point you're trying to solve. So if your pain points are around slow movement or long cycle times or long lead times, a Kanban board may really help because it'll help you visualize work, see where you're stuck, and just keep an eye on things. It will reveal inefficiencies in your flow in a way that's just, you can't argue with what's right in front of you. And it simplifies things. It reaches low tech and it requires very little administration. But if your pain points are centered around internal improvements or broken processes, then maybe the retrospective is a great way to start because it shines a light on things we know are broken. And it's a way to get people collaborating and solving in shorter time frames. The important thing is that you take a few moments to really think about which technique you think will help the team the most in the shortest period of time. You preferably don't want a lot of false starts, so it does pay to take time and care to think about which one feels like a great fit. Now, ultimately, you can't eliminate fear entirely. You'll always be forced to work around it. And the secret to being effective in new agile adoption is not to throw up your hands and say, this can't be done, this team is beyond repair, nor should we accept half measures and management by spreadsheet. Basically, that means allowing bad behavior to continue because we don't want to upset the apple cart. Nor is it an option to solve via long runway framework where you need six months or a year to plan and install certain practices, roles, structures, and flows. Rather, what you need to learn how to do to be effective in ramping up Agile quickly and in a way that will stick and spread is to learn how to outmaneuver resistance and hesitation, to understand how to get into people's hearts and minds to learn the source of their fear, and then to slowly change it, not with logic or with force, but with small, safe experiments that move you a little bit in the right direction every day, in ways that are collaborative, co-creative, and most importantly, valuable and visible. Because that's how you light a fire that other people want to come to when they see the change, when they feel and experience how much better the world could be. The fear is no longer a problem. Folks, thanks for listening. You can reach out at badassagile.com or find me on Twitter at badass underscore agile. I'll see you next time. And until then, stay badass. Badass.